Hello. Quincy, ah, Quincy, Quincy's shorter than me. <laughs> Come on, can't admit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, first of all. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it went well, mate. Honestly, it was a, what a wonderful day. Do you know what I mean? It was a lot of preparation into it, uh, months, and it all planned out exactly how I want it. Now, today, I forgot to put something on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna moan, she already has. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not single no more. <laughs> the ring should be there, I just openly forgot about it. Do you know what? It's, I've been um, in and out of sports my whole life, but I've never actually committed to one sport for a long period of time. I still do it now. I actually started off boxing, and I, st oh, about eight, seven. And um, I started boxing, I had a few bouts, really enjoyed it. Um, but when I got into secondary school, so when I got to about 11, I went to St. Bonds and I realised everyone was playing football and boxing is such a hard, lonely sport. And as a kid, you just get attracted to what your mates like. Mm. And uh, eventually I started playing football very late on. I actually started playing football around 12, 13 years old. And um, by then, everyone had a couple years on top of me. Yeah. So it was always a catch up game. Um, long story short, I started playing for uh, New Newham Warriors, which was my first team. Um, we used to train at Wanstead Flats. Used to be an Echo Prem. Um, yeah. yeah, brilliant. I used to play with Alex Crookshank. What position did you play? I played centre mid. Still do today, to be fair. <laughs> Trying to, anyway. Um, I used to play with Jay Knight. Jay was there as well. Jay was always scoring. Started from young, always a goal scorer. You knew that from him. Alex, always solid. A few other big names that we used to play with um, that aren't involved with Beatties. But yeah, we, we started as a group, about 14, 15 years old. Eventually went to Tilbury, Tilbury under 18s, after that. Eventually made my way whilst I was at uni, still trying to play football, went to Grays. I went to University of Kent, done sports science, I studied sports science, um, really enjoyed it. I also went with Quincy, to be fair. I can't seem to shake him off. I went all the way to um, secondary school with him, went to college with him, and then we went to the same university. And whilst at uni, I was, um, I thought, I still want to keep football going on. Um, so Alex Crookshank was at Grays at the time, same as Josh Flynn. Um, they brought me down to Grays Athletic and I was playing the under-21s with them. I enjoyed it. I was, it was good to get involved with a good setup like that where they had their own training ground, train regularly throughout the week. What level was that? Um, that was under-21s level. But Grays Athletic first team at the time was playing Ryman Prem or Bostic Prem if it's known at, at the moment. Um, yeah, so I'd done that throughout my third year uni. But honestly, my heart still lies in boxing. I, c I can't shake it. I, I go away from the gym for about two, three weeks and I'm just itching to get back into it. Have um, you I've had five in total now, three wins, two losses. I fought from everything from 78 kg, which is super middle, all the way up to about 86, which in the pro ranks, they don't actually have a, a weight carry grief 86. 80s, I don't know, I don't know. Pro, pro ranks, you've got 81 kg, which is light heavyweight, and then you've got 91 kg, which is cruiserweight. So I find myself always fighting between them two weights. Um, I prefer fighting at light heavy. I'm quite tall for the weight. Um, and yeah, I've sparred. I've been pulled in for professional camps. I've sparred with a few professionals that you might not, not know about, but the most big name that I've sparred with is Anthony Yard, who also trains down at the Peacock. I've sparred so with him. Well. Yeah, yeah, I train down at the Peacock as well. Um, and obviously he fought for a world title only a couple of months ago. Come off a little bit short against Kovalev, but um, brilliant learning experience for me to go and train with someone of that calibre and also know that I can hold my own against someone that's world class. So credit to Anthony Yard for bringing me in and I was really happy with like, the experience he gave me. I just got to keep on learning, you never know. Do you know what I mean? Boxing's a hard game, you never know where it can take you, but obviously I've always got my heart in football as well. Do you know what I mean? I want the best of both worlds all the time. I'm only 24 now. If I turn over by a 26, 27, um, I'll be happy. And I think that do you, you never know what can happen. Honestly, hand on heart, technically wise, I, I reckon I'm good enough to hit domestic level, British level. And once I hit there, you never know. You never know. I don't put a cap on it as long as I work hard. So you have um, a background in coaching. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit about that? 
when you started, how you got into that? Yeah, do you know what? I actually started for a bit of money. Um, I, was, I was very young. i uh, done my FA Level 1 with Quincy. Oh, again, this guy, I always mention him. <laughs> we actually done our FA Level 1 and our Sports Leadership Level 2 together. There was a scheme uh, running Newham where if you'd done your FA Level 1, you'd get £100. So we actually used it as a little bit of a, whilst we was at college, get a little bit of money. £100 was a lot when you're 16, 17 years old. And um, the, the person that run it, um, Frank, run some, a, a big team, still running today actually, called Ripleway. And um, he brought me down just to get the experience, the hours that you need to clock up. And I just felt a natural, a natural buzz to it, a natural like, attraction to it of, of improving someone and, and trying to do your best that someone can achieve better than what you did. Um, so I was at Rippleway for a while and then they paid for my FA Level 2. So they put me onto an FA Level 2 course and um, I met someone called Ian Hart and he was one of the mentors there and he's a UEFA coach and he's the head of recruitment at Southend and uh, me and him, to be fair, we just got along. We rubbed off each other's shoulders. We, we both thought it, it, each other was funny. And he brought me down to Southend. Um, and I was at Southend for, for a few weeks just doing, you know, the academy coaching. And that could range from under eights to under nines all the way up to under 15s. And that gave me a good experience to see different levels and different coaches and how they worked. Um, and over just having good personality and getting along with people, I, get to, I got to know someone called Dave Huzzy and he's the under-18s manager, and uh, me and him actually become really close, and he asked me to come into the under-18s level. Once at the under-18s level, I'd work on the sports science side in the morning, so getting everyone ready and fit, and then we'd work on coaching in the evening with all the day release boys on a Wednesday, and um, coaching session on a later Wednesday, and some boys that we've even had on the challenge, um, if you remember Norman, that come on, Norman Wado and Weibo that come on to the challenge, um, I've worked with him closely when at South End. Um, then Phil Brown was there at the time, so on a Friday we get to work with Phil Brown as well. And it just opened my eyes um, working with UEFA A coaches, UEFA Pro coaches, and just just seeing how a professional football club works. Mm. And I was only young; I was only 19. I think I was one of the youngest in the country to be actually working in a professional club. I was actually the same age, only one year older than the under 18s, and I'm sitting there with first team coaches talking about tactics, talking about setups for the Saturday game. Um, it was a massive eye opener and I learned so much on man management, how they dealt with certain situations, and I took that into my next role. So I was at university and I was offered um, a sports science placement at Gillingham, and this was the, for the first team. Um, so I went there, and I was there for a couple of weeks um, before they asked me to take like a little session. Mm. I took the first little session and they realised, OK, he's only got an FA Level 2, he ain't much, but the kid knows what he's talking about. I'm only 20, 21 at this point. Um, and they started involving me in the coaching, which was a massive step. You think you're 19, 20 years old and you are telling professional footballers that earn £1,000 a week <laughs> running with Range Rovers. <laughs> And you're trying to tell them what to do. It was, um, yeah, I was thrown in the deep end a little bit, to be fair. But the coaching staff at Gillingham were great. They helped me out. Um, if I'm being honest, my heart was still at South End, um, and I still have frequent contact to South End. Um, and that, that was it. After I finished with Gillingham, I was only at Gillingham for about four months before I wanted to come away from it because I wanted to go into teaching, and there was more money in teaching. Uh, more of a career in teaching in terms of a, of a ladder. And then, um, yeah, found myself somehow coaching my group of friends and under Justin as assistant manager at the moment. It was a good performance for 35 minutes, OK? It was a threatening performance for 35 minutes. Um, one of the goals was due to pressure. In midfield, we just dropped off a little bit too deep and we know what they're going to do. They're going to get it on the full backs, they're going to get in midfield, they're going to turn and they're going to just try and ping it over the back of your reds. You've been playing very well and dealing with it so far. Look at them, they're getting overexcited. They're getting so gassed up that they're 2-0 ahead. They know they shouldn't be. They're robbing this result at the moment. So where's my characters? Who's going to step up to the plate now? Who's going to take the game to them? So uh, I want to get into that. What was your first, how did you first start with big teams? That day, okay. Well, the first time I was, I actually come to Soccer AM. I was, I was, I'm close with all of them. I've been close with all of them since I was 11, 12 years old. And um, 
I actually was in, I come along when they went on to Soccer AM and they'd done the blindfold challenge. Jay, <laughs> Replays on that for you. All right, so Michael, you've, you've no, got it's, it's your blindfold. Okay, then, right, the ball's on the spot. Lloyd is back in goal again. All right. I need a crowd. Okay. That was, that was the first time that I weren't a part of Beatties at that point, but we were such close friends with everyone that they also allowed me to come on and, and see the setting. Um, past that point, it was all a, almost in a sense seeing it grow and seeing what it was doing well. And I felt like I could offer a few things. And it was about a year after that it actually started. Um, I think it was the Young Philly video um, when we got Young Philly on for a shoot where that was the actual first time that I came about, I come on. And trust me, I was nervous. Go on, Bill. Show us what you got. Bill. Go on then. Bill. They might as well. I would have been more comfortable if there was 300 people watching. Because when that camera is there, you look at it and you're like, this thing don't blink. <laughs> this thing sees everything. Anything you say, if you start it, it picks it up. I was nervous. And um, I scored one goal. And honestly, that's all I wanted to score. So now you got fucking glue to your boots, Bill. Uh, um, and after the Young Philly shoot, um, I wanted to get involved with the 11 aside team. Um, obviously, I've played football with a lot of them f for many years. Um, and I wanted to play football with them. I wanted to play on a Sunday. I'd play in pre-season um, often, um, but obviously Justin was the manager. And I tried all my bribing skills. I tried everything. I'd, oh, get me in the team, but just text him privately. Come on, just everyone, get me in the squad. Get me in the squad. Everything. It, it never worked. It never worked. It weren't good enough. It weren't good enough. It weren't good enough. I think people were slating me. Justin has never seen me play football properly. Um, but yeah, it just ne it never seemed to work out in terms of, of playing. Yeah. I, was, I still love playing. I'd still take the opportunity to play. But I think my actual qualities are better as a manager. Then there's playing, but it's obviously frustrating. I think any manager looks at a game of football and feels a little bit of frustration when you're like, I want to be out there as well, but yeah. it's good to have a good part as a manager. So how, how are you finding the first season as assistant manager of Beatties? I, I'm enjoying it. I'm being fully honest. I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, it started off in pre-season where I took over the last two games against um, the Dons and against Kitchener. Um, so that was a little bit of an eye-opener because obviously th there's big personalities in the squad but I'm a big personality as well so people were doubting it but for me it was never a doubt in a sense that they're my mates but I'm also a big personality lead for matching. Uh, dealing with coaching your mates and drawing the line between being the manager and being uh, the One thing that I am um, and there's probably people watching this that are going to probably say yes is that I'm very professional um, very in, in even in my career what I do um, there's like a switch. I can be very fun, jokey, laughing, whatever. But if there's a job to be done, it will be done to the best of its ability and there's no minimum expectations. Um, so I sort of took my profession into the role and it seemed to work out fine. But coming into the season, uh, I first of all, a little bit anxious, never been an assistant manager, yeah. being a coach, but never been an actual assistant manager. So it was, first of all, getting to grips on that position. Even though it's Sunday League, it was still a bit of a transition. It was a transition. I still say, it. no, it is a transition, but working underneath Justin is working well. We're doing well with each other, really enjoying it, and I'm learning a lot. So that's, that's the key, is that I'm still learning, and that's important. Um, as you can see by the start of the season, it's actually gone well, and it's about kicking on and making sure that we actually get trophies by the end of the season. My long-term goal is that anything can happen, literally anything. If we look at previous teams, like hashtag, um, where they're pulling in mad numbers on, on a general, general game. Obviously, they went down the semi-pro route, but for us, we don't have to follow anyone. We can do our own thing. This is such a new and exciting thing that was just started where YouTube football is booming. We've got to think that we've probably got more subscribers and get more views than some Premier League teams, some championship teams. And when you put that into perspective is that 
We can really go with this. We can go as far as we want. Why can't we say that maybe we could be the first YouTube team on Fever? Why can't we say that? We could be the first YouTube team on Football Manager. We can get sponsors like we have already with New Balance, similar to professional clubs, and really push us even further. I think as a, as a group, we've got so many individuals that have different qualities that we can go into different things, presenting, um, actual going to football clubs and actual going to coaching, actual players that can become professional themselves. Um, you just got to look at the, the people that have come before us. Look at KSI and Paul, and Paul Logan. They're going to earn millions over a boxing fight. None of them know how to box. How is this planned out? If any of you are watching, please bring me in. <laughs> bring me in, KSI, bring me in, okay? Just for sparring, I don't care what it is, bring me in. Like, YouTube has got that thing where you can do what you want. Chunks made, an, made a single. Fair enough, it was very good, to be fair, he's a good singer. But you didn't initially think that that would happen. The YouTube has got the, the freedom. There's no necessarily rules on the profession that we're doing. And that is an exciting time. For myself, personally, I want Batiste to do well. Um, a lot of people might sit here and say the same thing. I'm actually a team player. I want us to do well. If we're doing well, I'm happy. Um, on a personal point of view, like, do I want anything from Batiste? I never have actually started off wanting anything from Batis. I enjoy this procedure. I enjoy the lights, I enjoy the camera, I enjoy usual, I enjoy that. That already gives me the buzz. If there's, any if there's anything that comes past that, then yeah, that's good. Brands want to invest in us, brilliant. People want to meet us, brilliant. Being stopped and taking photos off, that's, that was a shock. I've been stopped in nightclubs. And you're like, I'm half the wave. Like, <laughs> what is going on? Um, yeah, like me, me and Quincy went to Amsterdam, stopped by someone who, is who was from ne the Netherlands, from other countries, stopping people and highlighting that who you are. Um, that goes a long way from someone from Newham, yeah. someone that, that, that didn't think that would ever happen to him. So that's, that's big enough for us. And do you. Do, do, what, do what's right for you at the end of the day. Work hard, work smart. And if things ain't going your way, which nine times out of ten life doesn't go your way. It's about your work ethic and your mentality of putting your head down and going, cool, I'm going to change this round. Um, too many weak people give things up. Um, if you've got a, a dream, chase it, go for it, do it. Um, we come from Newham. Everyone in this room, everyone in Beatties uh, comes from either Newham or Hackney. And um, let's be honest, it ain't the nicest of areas. And you've got to find a silver lining in the area that you're living in. So maybe we're role models. Maybe there's some people that actually sit there and I see the comments that are saying, look, they look up to us, they're happy with us. If we can inspire one person, we've done our job as, as a team. If we can inspire 10 people, we've made a difference. So I hope someone watches this video, is inspired and wants to do the best that they can. That's all I ask, whatever field they want to go in. Yeah. <laughs>